Koenig, and I'm very happy to be here today to share with you one of the most precious gifts I've come across, and that is the practice of integral Hatha Yoga. Integral Yoga was brought to this country by Sri Swami Sachidananda, who is a world-renowned yoga master and great ecumenical leader. He is the founder and director of the Integral Yoga Institutes and the Satchidananda Ashrams with several centers throughout this country and abroad. He is the author of several books and also the director of the Integral Health Services Clinics, which have centers in Connecticut, Virginia, New York, LA, and India. And at these clinics, they employ the yoga techniques in combination with the medical sciences to help us experience optimum health. Today is the introduction of a six-week series in integral Hatha Yoga that we'll be offering. And today we are very, very fortunate to have with us in person His Holiness Reverend Sri Swami Satchidananda, who is the source, the very source through which we have received these yoga teachings, which thousands of people are practicing every day with great benefit. So it is my great honor and joy to share with you today Swami Satchidananda and his teachings. Swamiji, when I was first exposed to yoga 13 years ago, I saw a beautiful poster of you and it said, yoga is over 5,000 years old, but it may be new to you. For those of us who are new to yoga, would you please explain what is integral yoga? Hmm. What I mean by integral yoga is to integrate the various approaches, whatever would lead you to the goal, what we call yoga. Maybe I should tell you what yoga is then. Yoga is something that would keep your mind always balanced. There is a beautiful saying in Bhagavad Gita, Samatvam yoga uchyate, which means balance is yoga. If you could keep your mind always well balanced, then you are a yogi. When you say balanced, you are again from what? From the dualities, the ups and downs, pleasure and pain, profit and loss, such other things. So to keep the mind serene, tranquil, balanced is what is our aim behind yoga. Of course, this could be achieved in many ways. Not all are interested in one way. Some are physically oriented, they want to do something physical. Some are action oriented, they want to do, find this yoga through their actions. Some are very emotional, their heart plays a lot they would want to devote their life to something higher, which we call a devotional approach or bhakti yoga. Some don't like any of these things. They simply sit and want to analyze. What is yoga? Why am I disturbed? Why can't I keep myself peaceful? This is a sort of self-inquiry. So we approve and appreciate all these various approaches. So that is what we call integral yoga. It doesn't eliminate anybody from being a yogi. Swamiji, you said that there were different branches that are components of integral yoga. Mm -hmm. In this series, we're um, focusing on the Hatha Yoga. Mm -hmm. What is Hatha Yoga and what are the benefits in practicing it? Actually, the literal meaning of Hatha Yoga is to balance the two opposite poles in the body itself, ha and ta, the sun and the moon. 
are the positive and negative energies within the body because the body is very very important for any kind of practices or anything you want to do in this life there is a beautiful saying in the scriptures shariram adhyam khalu dharma sadhanam whatever you want to do even to enjoy the life even to do some business anything you need the body so hatha yoga plays a very very important part in anybody's life so hatha yoga mainly aims to keep the body always relaxed strong and ready for action at any moment without any sort of ailments that is the purpose behind hatha yoga swamiji some people when they think of hatha yoga think of someone in a cave with their legs twisted around their head in some contorted position who can practice yoga well it's not the cave dweller only has a body all of us have bodies so i would say whomsoever has a body should practice hatha yoga <laughs> <laughs> um, swamiji can people of various age groups is there any limit uh, to when someone could begin the practice of hatha yoga there's no limit as such children even from the age of 5 they can practice yoga but of course it varies according to the physical conditions one cannot do all the various postures so according to the situation the condition of the body one can practice any form of postures and breathing to suit them and what are the physical health benefits of doing the yoga postures well in the hatha yoga mainly it takes care of the spine and the nerve centers that are situated along the spine we normally say that the person becomes old if the spine becomes rigid so if you can keep a very supple spine relaxed spine then you are really young always so it concentrates on the spine and the nerve centers that emanate from the spine and of course it takes care of the endocrine glands also which are very very important for physical health glands like pituitary pineal thyroid thymus and so on so the hatha yoga practices directly act on those things and relieve tensions in those areas increase more blood circulation in those areas and squeeze out any toxins that they would have accumulated so in general it brings total relaxation in the body and rejuvenates entire body is there anything that one should be careful of or cautious with in the practice of hatha yoga the main thing is do not strain that is the most important thing because people want to even overdo things they want to they see the pictures and they want to bring to the same position soon that means over straining the body take it easy because even the scriptures say sthira sukham asanam whatever is steady and comfortable is a pose so take it easy and don't try to compete with others your neighbor would be doing a little more forward bending and you don't need to compete seeing that person because <coughs> your spine may be a little too stiff but if you keep on doing it it becomes relaxed and you will be able to do it after a couple of weeks so there's no rush and another thing is don't unnecessarily hold the breath when you do the postures because when you do the posture you are mainly doing something with the body and not with the breath so let the breath be always be relaxed and another important point you can notice is whenever you bend forward you exhale whenever you bend backward you inhale so it could be a nice coordination between the breath 
and the movements of the body. Swamiji, you mentioned that in the integral Hatha Yoga class we have some chanting and the yoga postures, deep relaxation, and then the breathing practices. Would you explain more about the breathing practices and the benefits that come from doing them? Well, the benefits of pranayama is well known. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, because we are breathing, we are alive. That's a sort of pranayama. Because prana is the vital energy that keeps us alive. But uh, unfortunately, many people do not know how to breathe well. They don't use the entire lungs. It's normally known that probably they use only about one-seventh of the lungs. I can even give you exact figures. In the normal breathing in and out, we use only about 500 cubic centimeter of air. But after a, a deep exhalation, if you breathe in to the fullest capacity, you can take in 3,600 cubic centimeter of air instead of mere 500 cubic centimeter. That means seven times more of air you can take in. That means seven times more of oxygen, seven times more of prana. You might wonder what is the difference between oxygen and prana then. Oxygen we all know, but what is prana? Prana is the vital energy that moves the entire cosmos. The oxygen goes and stops only in the lungs and gets diffused in the bloodstream, but the prana pervades all over the body. Every cell gets the prana. So a deep, deep breathing it's very important. And of course, there is another important benefit in pranayama is to regulate the mental condition also. Because whenever the mind gets restless, the breath becomes vehement and vice versa. So if you can regulate the breath and make it flow smoothly, your agitations in the mind are calmed down right away. So anytime anybody is a little agitated, all they have to do is just sit, watch the breath and make it deeper. Within a few minutes, they can see that the mind is so calm and peaceful. Because the mind and the breath go together. And another important thing is, as I said earlier, because all the cells get oxygenated, to use the medical term, they burn out all the toxins in the body. It enriches the entire body. You can feel life from head to foot. There's no sluggish area in the body, just by the pranayama alone. I would even suggest, even if we cannot do Hatha Yoga every day, we don't have much time, spend more time in pranayama, because it's the pranayama that's going to help you a lot. Swamiji, many people in this country are concerned with controlling their weight. Does Hatha Yoga help with weight control? Hatha Yoga helps in giving you the normal weight that you should have. When I say normal weight that you should have, I don't mean what the doctors say. Mm -hmm. Each constitution is different, according to my thinking. Some are naturally a little on the heavy side. Not everybody has to be in the same weight level. So it gives you a healthy weight, if I can use it that way. Because as long as you are healthy, a couple of pounds this way or that way doesn't make any big difference. So the Hatha Yoga helps you in getting your natural body, which is very important than the body that the doctors want you to have. I hope I am not getting into a controversial <laughs> thing. <coughs> this is what I feel, because sometimes people, when they feel that the body is a little couple of pounds more than the prescribed weight, they become heavy in the mind. What do they use then? 
the mind becomes heavier than the body. <laughs> so I would want to tell them that remove that kind of idea that because you are a couple of pounds more, mm. you are sick and you are not fit to live. But take it easy. <coughs> and of course, Hatha Yoga will take away any excess weight your body should have, would have. And at the same time, if your body doesn't have enough weight, it will put on the weight also. That is the beauty of Hatha Yoga. It just brings you to your natural condition. Mm. Okay. Swamiji, at the end of the Hatha Yoga class, we spend a couple minutes in silent meditation. Would you say a few words on meditation? Well, of course, as I said in the very beginning, the aim of yoga is to keep your mind well balanced. And through Hatha Yoga, you achieve the physical balance and through that, the mental balance. And to the end of the practice, you take your time to see whether you have achieved some balance or not. Because even by the practice, you would have come to a balanced state. So just be quiet. Experience that peace that the body and mind would bring, would get by the yoga practices. So I would say chant a little Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om a couple of times and then slowly sink into that thought of peaceful state and experience the peace within. And of course, before you finish that, imagine that you are sending this peaceful thought vibrations to encircle the whole world so that it can benefit all those who are in search for the peace. So it won't be only a selfish practice, it will be a selfless practice also. That way you will be also contributing to the world peace. At the end of the Hatha Yoga class, people often feel more limber, more relaxed, more balanced, more peaceful. Mm -hmm. And then they go into their everyday life and the stresses and pressure of deadlines and so forth, people begin to lose that feeling. How can one carry that feeling more effectively into everyday living? Well, if a person practices these things regularly, it will slowly begin to permeate in their daily life also. But a little conscious effort not to get restless, agitated in the daily life also would help. Otherwise, you know, you take a nice bath using all kinds of nice soaps, scents, and then immediately go and roll around in the dirt. What is the use? You miss all that. But I won't say that there is no benefit at all. Otherwise, Hatha Yoga is useless. Even if you are agitated in your daily life, doesn't matter. Be regular in Hatha, Hatha Yoga. If you want the benefit to be sooner, just be careful in your daily life also. One thing I would say, why people get agitated in the daily life? Restless, hectic, anxious. Because they are trying to grab something, get something. I have to get it for me. That kind of selfish approach in anything will ultimately create a little tension in our mind. And as the mind, so the body. So the tension of the mind gets transferred to the body also. So if you could keep a sort of accepting profile, like, all right, I do my best. But whatever I deserve will come to me. That kind of acceptance. Hmm. I don't mean that you simply accept and sit quiet doing nothing. Do what you can, but don't demand too much. Things will come when you are ready. In a way, with a balanced mind, you can achieve more than a restless mind. Even if you get lot with a restless mind, you're not going to use it well. You'll misuse it. So keep your mind well balanced, even in your daily life, even in the family matters, business matters, wherever you are. 
then the benefits of hatha yoga will be enhanced a lot and your life will be a total tranquil life Swamiji, there are some teachers in California who say Hatha Yoga is the end all. What is your opinion on this? I really don't know what they mean by practice of Hatha Yoga then. That means just practice some asana, pranayama, that is enough. Don't have to do anything else. I won't say so because even practice of Hatha Yoga, Asana, Pranayama are more or less for the curative side. If you could keep your mind serene, you don't even have to practice Hatha Yoga, I would say so. So the daily life, taking care of the daily life is more important. And I would insist a lot about everything that gets into your system, including the food that you eat, the drinks that you drink, the air that you inhale, they all help a lot in making your life better, healthy and happy. So even thoughts should be because your thoughts are food for the mind. You are not only eating through the mouth, you are eating through your brain, eating through your eyes, eating through your nose, through your ears. So everything that would go into your system should be clean, pure and to use the Sanskrit term sattvic. Sattvic means balanced. Otherwise, Atta Yoga alone is not going to bring much benefit. Now for someone who is beginning a six-week series in Hatha Yoga, what advice or what recommendations would you have for them? I would say I'm happy that you are getting into this, you are beginning, but don't expect too much too soon. Take it easy, go slow and be regular. Again to quote the Patanjali, what is a practice? What is the definition? Or how can you achieve the benefit of any practice? He says, I will say it in Sanskrit. Dirga kala nairandariya satkara sevito prabhumi. The practice becomes firm, well established, only if you practice for a long time. Six weeks, don't think at the end of the six weeks you are going to be a big yogi. <laughs> at the end of the six weeks, you are beginning to be a good yogi. You are simply gathering information by the six weeks. Then you have to practice all by yourself. So a long time practice is very important. Nairandarya, without break. Not that you practice Hatha Yoga one day and forget for ten days and then on and off I do practice. <laughs> Many people say that. On and off you breathe. What will happen to you? <laughs> okay. That we are doing continuously, without break. And the third important thing is with real zeal, with real interest in it. Uh, I don't know where I'm getting it now or not. Uh, sat up. Without any seriousness in that. These are the three things. To put that again, long time, without break, with all interest. Then certainly, you can achieve the great benefit the yoga can give you. So don't be anxious to get something too soon. Certainly, by getting into this itself, you are a lucky person. I would certainly wish you a great, great future through this yoga into your life. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today, Swamiji, and Thank for being a beautiful example of the teachings of yoga. Thank you. Thank you. You are, a, you are an example yourself. <laughs> Thank, you. Yourself. Thank you. Thank you.
I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us today. And we look forward to having you with us next week when we will begin the practice of integral Hatha Yoga. Thank you. Om Shanti.